Okay, we're going to learn sounds. We'll start with, I'm trying to ignore all the washitu words. I mean, I don't even know why they put washitu words in here. C-H sound. That's like, um, I'm trying to use some of the words that you already learned. Chue. Like a uh, big sister. Sister to sister. Big sister. Okay. Chue. It's a hard, this second one is a hard C. Let's use OG. OG. Grandma. It's a nasal in. Grandma. Your grandma is an OG. Me too. I like that because it's kind of hard. It's something that you don't hardly use all the time. Me, chi, chu, chu, the ch sound and then the glottal, <coughs> the glottal stop. It means something like I'm, if I make a commitment, it's me chi chu. Big sister. From little sister. Okay, a G is a ri, ri, ri. You make the sound up here. I was using one for the older, uh, la, uh, the other class. It's actually, it sounds just like a sound, but it's a word. That's when you get up and you have that big messy hair. <laughs> or the wind blows the heck out of your hair, you know. Messy. And it's funny because you can only use it in hair. Hair like in um, your hair is messy or your horse's hair is messy or that doll's hair is messy. You can only use it in, mess, uh, in, a, in a hair business. It's the only time, only time you use the word. So when you're talking about a messy hair. Right down here. You remember I was telling you about the word. I said we called the Black Hills. And I thought it had to do with all the jagged wood rocks and all the cliffs and everything in here. My brother said, no, he said, it's um, when somebody, something's real thick, like a thick forest, you know, something that's real thick, like thick grass. We were talking about khe, in the grass mountain, grass mountain, we call it khepeji. And all it is is because the mountain is just so thick with the, it doesn't have a lot of heel, uh, trees on it, but it sure has a lot of grass on it. It's all weeds and stuff. So they called it Khepeji. It was a different kind of a hill compared to all the other ones. Khesapa is also the same. 
Sapa. When you look that way, and you see all that black like that, it's all thicket trees, you know, all different kinds of trees and plants. It makes it look black, and it's a thicket. So it's called. That's why they call it Chesapa. They call the um, Rocky Mountain Cheska. And the only reason why they call it the Cheska is the mountains as they go up, it's all thicket, it's all trees and everything. And then up on the top, then that's where you find all the white snow and all the the, um, the rocks and everything up there. Che. So that's what that is, thick. <coughs> Okay. Che next is Ich e. Ich e is um guttural sound and yet it has that glottal stop in there. Ich e. 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 There's a different sound in it. Ich. Ch'e, ch'e, is a glottal, I mean a guttural sound, the guttural sound. And then with this on there, it's a glottal stop. So it's ich'e, ch'e, makes a different sound. And this one means like, uh, I think it's stone. There's a different, in, Rocks, there's a difference in rocks and stones. It's you kind of strange. That one? Where does it come from? <laughs> yeah. Feel it right here and you can move. It's like a, remember when a cat's purring? <laughs> it's like a, yeah. <laughs> Just like, eh. Ishtach, eh. It's right here. <laughs> and then this one is the same sound except it has that glottal stop, so it has a short stop. <laughs> Ch e. Ch e. Ch e and ch e. Glottal stop. Mix of glottal stop. P. P. Just like regular ba ha. It's a hard P. Ba ha. Ba ha. It's right up here in the lips. Ba ha. Ba. 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 Like almost like a B. Baha. Yeah. Baha. And then <laughs> Pha Su. It's a guttural sound. Pha. Pha Su. It, it almost comes from your lips and it goes back. Pha Su means your nose. Pha Su. Pha Su is your nose. <laughs> but it's like, you know, if you sneeze, you go, psha, you know, and that's where one of the words come from, so is psha, you know, pasu, that's where that nose, you know, comes from, pasu, because of the sound. If you cough, you say, hoch, hoch, you know, it comes from way down here, you know, and you say, hoch, you're coughing, you know, when you're coughing, you know. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. <laughs> so, just like when you're guzzling something, you know, you go, you know, you're, it, it's, you know, if you're drinking it, it, that sound that comes out of it, that's where a lot of our sounds come from, you know. It originally, it developed from there because of, and when you're learning, learning to make a language, you use it close to whatever you, whatever you're aware of, you know, around you. Just like um, those three species out there, you know, when they bark, remember? That's why they call them species because they make that sound. You know, <laughs> and uh, when they growled, you know, growled, you know, you know, they they growl at you. The, the dogs, you make that sound from there. Things like that, you know, you, you learn how to make sounds from, uh, words from the sounds that you hear. Oh, oh, oh here's the glottal stop. 
This makes the big difference right here. Oh. 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 If you put your hand like this, go, oh, oh. It's called an aspirated, aspirated sound because you're making it a blowout. Oh. Papa. There's, there's no sound that comes out of it. Papa. Papa. Baha. Those are unaspirated sounds. Oh. 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 That's how you learn to start <coughs> recognizing sounds. Pa. 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 And some of the languages, the linguists, when they write, they, they uh, add an H to it. A lot of this, and people all says they're changing our words, you know, they're misspelling it. And I said, no, that H is in there because it's that unaspirated and aspirated sound. Oh, oh, there's a silent H in there. Just like when we have the N, the silent N, it's in there. So that's how that comes. Oh, is a fog. The fog. Oh, oh, learn how to use the, use your lips. Oh, oh. There's not very many words that go with that. There's oh, nup e, nup o, echa, ap o Those are probably the only words that we use that sound in. Oh, oh. If there's a, a, well, there's another a P, a hard, the hard P, you can say Bo. Yeah, make it, make it sound like it's a B, Bo. Bo. And that's anything that's swollen. If you have a swollen, it's Bo. 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 It's right up here. Yeah, Bo. And you say Bo, then it's fog. Po. Pasu. You know. So it does make a big difference in how, um, <coughs> yeah, bo, bo is just a hard, that B I was showing you about, papa and all that, that's a, so it sounds like a B, but it's a, bo and a, bo and o. So you have to have a guttural sound in there, because if I said, um, you know, gee, my arm is really o. You know, or my finger is all, oh, you know, and everybody will say, hey, gee, you got fog on your finger, you know? <laughs> That's what would happen, you know? So if you use it like a, if you said it the right way, you know, bow, then it would say, my heart, my finger is swollen, you know? Or gee, it's just all bow outside, you know, and everybody would be looking, well, what's a bow, you know? <laughs> what's swollen, you know, outside, you know? And it, all the time it's supposed to be bow, you know? And that really makes a big difference and a lot of people are also, I don't like making writing teaching with uh, I don't want to use all them sounds and now I'm starting to argue back and I said no you have to use them sounds because like we have three K's and they all make a different sound and you have to use them the right way otherwise I said you're not gonna make sense you know it's not gonna go where you where you need them. Our language is really limited. We always, I always tell people, think Lakota, because if you think Lakota, you can think of anything that's around, surrounding where we live. That's where we made our language. We made our words. Our sounds come from there, you know. We didn't use anybody else's. Just certain ones, we use other people's uh, language. But uh, when I was in, Denmark, listening to them talk, pretty soon I was starting to understand you. Hey, I know what you guys are talking about. But the funny thing is, you know, they, um, what they did was they take the English word and then you either have a Danish beginning or kinship name and then you have a Danish ending. And so that's English word with that, you know. And you guys see it, and uh, if you guys go around and read a lot of the signs, because a lot of everything nowadays is... Uh, 
Mexican, Spanish, you know. And you just about have an idea about what they're talking about. Restaurante, you know. They talk about, uh, let's see what kind of words they come up with. The exit has a, has a name of its own, but it has a Mexican ending. You can have, see the exit in it, the word in it, but you can see the Mexican ending or the beginning of it. There's a whole bunch when you walk around out there and just read a lot of those labels. They're labeled like that, you know. We have some that are Lakota that are also that way too. Hard key. These are these are fun ones. Ma. Maka. Maka. It's a hard K. It's a skunk. Maka. Right here, Maka. Hard K, Maka. Hard sound. Here's the other Mak. M A K E. It can be Maka, but then you add a guttural sound to it, okay? Maka. Earth, dirt, anything that has to do with the, the ground. Maka, maka, and maka. When they first started teaching all this stuff, I remember the they used, people used to write it, and they'd say, uh, "Grandmother Earth, it's unchi maka, okay, unchi maka. If you don't write your guttural sound on it, because you don't have to necessarily use that, because it's a regular sound, you know." A lot of them would say grandmother skunk. <laughs> <laughs> grandmother skunk, you know. No, it's grandmother earth, maka, with a guttural sound, you know. So that was another one. This one's a glottal stop. Jikala. Jikala. That's something small. Jik a la. Where's it at? Jik a ka. Ka. See, that almost hurts your throat, doesn't it? Jik a la. Gee, if I spoke Lakota all day long, man, I would lose my voice for sure. Jik a la. Pcha and ri and ch. You know. There's another one here where you use the dog, dog sound, hello. You know, that's growled. You know. <laughs> so we speak a lot of Lakota in the, at the end, you know, they, uh, it's a lot of people always get tired of talking and I can't talk anymore, there's too much sounds in there, you know. <laughs> but that's how it goes. Yeah, it does, it does, it dries out your throat from listening to, saying too much of them sounds. That's why I kept it separate because I wanted to only do it at one time. <laughs> I don't want to use it all the time because it, it does get you. There's too much. There's too much exercise in here. Actually, what it is, S H sound. S H sound. That one with a dot on top. Shh. So it's sha ba. Sha ba. Okay. Sha ba. I mean something that's dirty. Dirty windows and dirty floor, whatever. Dirty hands. Sha ba. Next H and S is a glottal stop. S e. We use the words e. It's a glottal stop. Okay. I'll use the same words here. Say, 
<coughs> or you can just use the one. So it's um, a it's something that drips. Yeah. Something that drips. Yeah. Oh no, it's not drips. It's um something like it. It's like I'm dancing and then somebody's trying to copy me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, you know, they're trying to copy me, but they're not doing it. You know, doing it right. It, and it's it, it's just a small word, but it, it you know it it really makes a big difference on how you use it in the sentence because all of a sudden it's like they're trying to copy me, but they're not doing it. It's air, you know. So it's it's a word that's hardly ever used, you know. You know, do it like that, you know, that type of thing. Okay, now, look at the growl song. First the sound in here, SH sound, and then the glottal stop. Okay, same thing, it really makes a difference on your spelling. This is the one you can do. It's dripping. D R I P P I N G. Like water in a faucet. Remember, you have a leak in a faucet that's. Sh -sh -a. Sh -sh -a. Or like it's raining and it's, uh, it's a real light rain, you know, just. Sh -sh -a, Manish, sh -a. It's a dripping. It's not a heavy pour or. You know, things like that, it's, it's more like a dripping type of thing. You know? Or after rain, it, it drips around the house. Manish ish, that's what that is. So it makes a big difference. This is, oh, eh. There's no SH sound in it. Here's the SH sound up here, but no SH sound here. So it's eh. And then eh, sh eh. So whenever you're using your S, whenever you're using your S in a different um, sentence, or you're talking about using in the S in a different area, like I'm in the other room trying to dance, you know, me as a watch, you know, they're trying to copy my dance, you know. When the rain is outside and the water is dripping, it's manish ish eh. Sh ish eh. It makes a big difference in where you use it. T. Still, dona. This one's easy. Daku. Daku. One of my sons, when he calls me, he says, Taku, yeah? Long time ago, that's what they used to say when you said, What do you want? <laughs> yeah, Taku. It's a hard not Taku. Even the K is hard. Taku. Oh, you're drying out. I'm drying out already. <laughs> Talk too much and then it dries out on me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guttural sound T. Ha. Lo. Ha. Lo. If I wanted to, I could have still kept you guys going on your vowels. Be ha. Lo. I said everybody used to think. I said everybody used to think the buffalo is real. Uh, well, it is in a certain way, but you have to look at it in a different way. A buffalo was our means of survival. We can use every part of the bu uh, buffalo for some use. And long time ago, they used to use them for everything. And every part of the buffalo was used for certain activity or, or use. You know, for needs of survival, plus eating. And ta. It's something that belongs to something. Tcha, tcha, you know. 
Like if I said, he mitchawa, that means the is mine. Tcha, that is mine. He mitchawa. Mitchawa, that means it's mine, something that belongs to me, you know. It's mine, or my, my body, my body belongs to me, you know. And so, when the buffalo came along, all it was was a big piece of meat, because all of a sudden, the whole thing, we could utilize it, it belonged to us. So, tcha tchunka, big meat. Tchunka is big, right? Big, so all it was is big meat. That's all it is, tcha tchunka. I, um, when I went to that language, I mean that uh, Indian Education Summit, they had all kinds of material. Here, this one girl is from, I think she's from Montana or Wyoming. She had a, a booth up and she had uh, pictures of the whole buffalo and all the pieces on it that's utilized. I think they have it at the forestry, oh not forestry, uh, game fishing park. I've been trying to get one from them. But uh, my brother and I were talking about it because my dad used to butcher and he used to talk about all the body parts, how all they had different names for all the parts in, in, in a beef, you know, and what they were used for. And they have videos of it, you know, in the archives over there. Anyway, everything has the name Tcha on it. <laughs> yeah, everything. The hide is Tcha Halo, you know, the meat is Tcha Lo, you know, Tcha Cheji, you know, Tcha. You know, the kidneys, you know, all these, all these different parts, they all have the word ta in it. Only because it means meat, but it's a meat that has a, it's a different organ or different part, you know. So they have ta shupa, you know, just like that's the, ta shupa is the, the guts, you know. Ta chupa is the marrow of the bone, the marrow bone, you know. So there's names, all kinds. So Talo has a big, you know, it has a big vocabulary, a big uh, language in itself on how you can use this word. Tcha, tcha. A lot of people all say Talo. Talo, what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah, my, my husband used to say, hello, Talo. <laughs> you know, all it is is just meat, you know. So that's that, glottal stop. I'll use that o ting ting, that's double. O ting ting. Okay, that's a double, right? Nasal in. It's not o ting ting. <laughs> it's not o ting ting. It's o. In, in, it's way in here. Oh, teen, teen. Remember when you're drinking something and you're guzzling it? Teen, 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 teen. Do you hear that sound in there? Teen, teen, teen. Oh, teen, teen, teen. That's what that is. Oh, is just meaning that it's in something which is inside your mouth, you know, and you're, you're guzzling it. Teen, teen, teen. So it's oh, teen, teen. <laughs> So that's where the sound comes in. If you don't put that sound in, somebody's going to say, Oh, Tintin, what does that mean? You know, is that like what the word? You know? <laughs> so all these sounds do make something different. It, make a, it makes a big difference in our language. Because I can't say maka and maka. I can't say chikala. Chikala, you know. G is a G kala is something that's small. Chue Chue is a sister. Big I would say that to call my big sister that. Chue, older sister. But a boy can't call his uh, older sister Chue. You know, if it was a boy, he would call his older sister Tanke. 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 
tchanke, tchanke. And if it was his little sister, he would call her tchankshi, tchankshi, you know. It's all in that kinship system, and I'm going to use all of you guys aware of. But yeah, this is really important when you do uh, sounds. You have to, and I keep telling you, you have to use that. Stress marks. If I wanted to, if I wrote down, Jikala, even that, first of all, the word breaks up into syllables so that it's Jikala, okay? Jikala. Then pretty soon your I, you know, that doesn't sound like a regular, and then Jikala. This is grammar. This is grammar. This is how you learn words. This is how you learn your vowels. This is how you learn your dicritical marks. In order to learn it, you can separate them by syllables. Jikala. That's how you learn, learn how to use words. <coughs> and it's really important. And I always tell them that, you know, I said, you have to know that. I said, because, you know, if, if you wrote it just like this, and you, you're trying to teach, and you go, gee, well, you'll be saying, sikala, sikala, you know? Because you're just using English, or either sikela, sikela, you know? You'd be using uh, English terms. It'd be sikele, because the A is A, right? Not an A like ours. Jikele, jikala. So it's really important that you stress, or learn those stress. And there's um, there's another word here, pa, pore, pore. So if I use po, in in a different way, pore, that would make a beer. But I can't, I can't say pore. I can't say pore. I can't say pore. I can't say it that way. It's not even a word, you know. So it makes a big difference on how pore makes a big difference on how you use your stress marks. Otherwise, I'll I'll understand you completely different, you know. So, <coughs> hmm. 